Thanks. Uh, as Peter said, my name is Harley, um, primarily a WordPress developer, um, kind of making my own custom themes and plugins for small to medium businesses. And uh, I'm going to take you through today pretty much the way I started, um, all the way through to the way I work today, all the things I did wrong, um, and all my kind of aha moments, um, and the things I learned that helped me develop for WordPress. Um, I started with just HTML and CSS. Um, I did that through a TAFE course. I'd never used WordPress before I started working in it, which is where most people get it. Um, getting really good at breaking things, especially uh, server stuff. Um, it's kind of really easy to break, but that's how I learn. Um, break all the stuff, figure out how to fix it. Um, why WordPress? When I started this, um, I got a job at a small agency. Um, I was the only developer. They had three to six sites on an older CMS um, that I won't name. Um, they had to be updated at some point, but they were that old that whenever they got updated, uh, they completely broke. So obviously, that's not ideal. Um, I got to change CMS. Um, after a bit of Google search, a bit of research, I picked WordPress. Um, turned out to be a good decision, so I'm pretty happy with that. Um, when I started, I got about three sites in, I reckon. I was feeling pretty good with myself. Um, I was modifying the 2012 theme. It's a pretty good blank theme for anyone that is looking for something that is made correctly and pretty much doesn't have anything in it. Um, back then, I was just editing it. Um, after three or so sites, um, WordPress update came out. It would have been 3.8-ish. Um, so as I did, I updated core. Uh, it did its thing. I checked the website, and it was fine. All good times. Uh, also noticed that the themes had some updates. May as well update them too. Uh, clicked that update button, had a look at my website, and I found this. Big problem. No more website. All gone. Uh, kernel panic. So, pretty much, if the WordPress development journey is a roller coaster, this is that bit right after the start where you get to the top and you hit the bottom as fast as you physically can. Um, I learned a couple of really quick things here. Um, keep backups, please. Just keep backups. It doesn't matter if it's just your database, your theme, or the entire thing. Please get a backup. Uh, your hosting choices matter. In this instance, I didn't have backups. Never good. Uh, but our host was able to take a snapshot of our site from a day earlier. Um, thankfully, roll back to that, so I wasn't stuck with a blank theme and no website. Um, always have a plan B, because honestly, backups do fail. Um, GitLab is kind of the poster child for backups failing backups. Um, they probably want a big thing on that. Um, and this is something you always need to keep in mind. Um, once I got my site back, I felt pretty good. But obviously there was things to change, but this was me at that point in time. Um, big mistake, not using a local dev environment. You should never, ever be editing a live site. Um, obviously staging is another thing. Uh, staging is the nice to have, but not always uh, able to be implemented. Um, with your local dev environment, obviously there are several choices now. Um, being on Windows or Mac OS, uh, you've got MAMP or XAMP. Pretty easy to get started with. They're just simple GUI applications that will start an Apache server and MySQL. Uh, most of the time come bundled with PHP MyAdmin. So you're able to get off the ground running WordPress um, with an application package like Bitnami has for WordPress that you can open up in XAMP. Um, get started pretty easily. There's also command line variants. Uh, you've got Vagrant, uh, VVV, I won't try and pronounce their terminology, um, and what I use currently is Chassis. Um, if you saw Bronson's talk earlier this, well, earlier yesterday, um, you'd, pretty have, you'd pretty much have a good primer on that. Um, that's what I'm using at the moment. So it's quick, extensible, um, runs WordPress how I need it. Um, there's also Docker. Um, Tenup have a container for it at the moment. I tried to use it. Um, couldn't get it working. Um, 
I probably do need to give it more time because it has gained a lot of traction. Second big, big mistake, uh, coding using the WordPress editor. Please never do this. I didn't know when I was doing it though, so it was kind of, I can understand how you get into it. Um, appearance, editor, oh, there's some code for me to write. Uh, again, don't ever do this because 90% of the time it'll be on a live site. And if you are running that on a local development environment and editing in the editor, uh, you've got halfway through something you should be learning and decided to try it anyway. There are a couple of uh, text editors or IDEs. You could even write code in Notepad if you really needed to. Um, one I was using for a long time is Atom, uh, made by GitHub. Uh, you can use a lot of extensions with it as well. Um, Auto-completing, uh, there's auto-complete word uh, WordPress hooks, um, which is really handy. Um, Stylint, ESLint, a range of plugins that will help you work. VS Code, which I've now switched to. Um, I find it a lot quicker than Atom. A lot of people complain that Atom is quite slow, um, but it does depend on what you're doing with it. Uh, VS Code was quick to get all my Starlink configs, ESLink configs, all punched in from the start. Um, I just find it a lot easier to work in. Um, but if anyone else has any other options, give me a yell. Because um, IDE is pretty, uh, pretty um, opinionated. There's also PHP Storm, which I haven't had a chance to use. Um, I know a lot of people do use it, and there are a lot of setup guides specifically for WordPress. Um, Tom McFarlane. Uh, just as a point of reference, has released a lot in the last couple of months um, about the way he uses it uh, specifically specifically for WordPress. Um, it is quite a good option, I hear, but as I said, haven't used it and I really need to. Biggest mistake out of that entire story, essentially, was not reading documentation. Um, if I had to go onto the WordPress codex and had a look, Obviously, child themes is probably the first thing you see when you type in theming. Um, it could have saved me a lot of headaches and a day of pretty much panicking and contacting our server uh, host to roll back something that I could have fixed purely by just reading. Um, the WP Australia Slack, honestly, if you're not on it yet, please get on it. Um, it's just an immense amount of knowledge um, and pretty much everyone on there is there to help you if you ask anything. Um, a lot of friendly people. A lot of good advice that's being spread around. Um, WordPress.org forums. This is also something you can use just purely to ask questions. I mean, people don't bite. It's quite easy to ask something, even if it's stupid. It may seem stupid to you, but there may be someone out there that has no idea and they would like to know. Um, which gets to the last point. Just ask somebody. I mean, we're all here to learn. We're all here to bring each other forward as WordPress progresses. Um, and everyone's more than happy just to chat. Learn everything. So after that, I pretty much went on a tirade saying, well, I can't let this happen again. I really, really need to get into this further because I'm doing this for a job and I really don't know much. Um, always start with HTML and CSS, please. Uh, they are the foundations of the web, HTML being your structure markup, um, CSS being your styling. Um, if you really don't know them, you can't really get very far at all. Um, all webs are based on this, so that's always a good starting point. Uh, PHP basics. PHP is the language that kind of runs WordPress. Um, it's not WordPress specific. A lot of other things do run on PHP without being WordPress. Um, so it is something to learn, especially the basics of it. Um, and then obviously we move into WordPress specific PHP. WordPress out of the box comes with a lot of functions. Um, and the loop also, which is a big one if you're doing anything with themes. Um, just very important to learn because if you don't understand some of the WordPress specific PHP, um, it's going to get troublesome down the track. Uh, it's not hard to pretty much jump into. It's almost written in next to plain English. Um, but once you get your head around it, it is quite easy to pick up the rest of it. Um, something you should always learn in web development now, but this time is now more than ever. Vanilla JavaScript. You don't have to run into frameworks straight away. Um, 
they can get very complex even if you're doing something simple. Uh, but if you get the basics down to vanilla JavaScript, you can quite easily translate that to Node, React, Angular, Vue, whatever you want to use um, down the line. Uh, Backbone is something they're using in Core at the moment, and they will be switching. Um, a lot of arguments about it, React versus Vue versus anything else. Um, so if you do have Core development in mind, it is something you kind of need to learn, and then going down the track, framework. Pretty much enough reading got me by, um, but there was also a lot of online course content, especially now for WordPress. There's just an insane amount of people that are offering their knowledge for either free or a minimal subscription. Um, the biggest one that helped me was probably Team Treehouse. Zach Gordon has some videos up on there. It is a paid service, unfortunately, uh, but that was some of the things that helped me get to developing custom themes from just doing child themes. Uh, Linda and Udemy um, are also ones that you can pay for. Um, what a good content on there. Code Academy for basics for web dev. Um, it's going to get you by, and that's also free. Code quality does matter. WordPress do have PHP, JavaScript, and CSS styling standards. If you are building something in WordPress, it is good to adhere to these standards. It, it is optional, but in the end, if you write cleaner code, more compliant code, you're going to be developing better things for WordPress than just cowboying a copy-pasted solution from Stack Overflow or something. Um, StyleLint and ESLint are the plugins that will run through your code for it. Uh, there are configs out there for this um, by a guy named Stephen Edgar. He's written them um, to run in a variety of systems. Um, you can plug these into your IDE. It will automatically check your code um, and pretty much like yell at you if you're doing something wrong. Um, it'll point out what's wrong, where to fix it, and sometimes why. Um, that's only for some things. Some things will just throw an error for and say, don't do this. Um, and it's up to you whether you want to Google, why don't I do this? Um, Xdebug, I haven't had a chance to use, but uh, I do know a little bit about. Essentially, you can, with your PHP, you can live uh, debug it, essentially, uh, by telling it at a certain point, I want to know what this is to the computer. Um, you can do it in other ways, like var dump. Um, but Xdebug is more ideal. There are tools to make life easier when you are developing. Uh, these are mostly JavaScript based, but you don't need to know a lot of JavaScript to get by with them. Uh, Gulp and Grunt are task runners, so what they will do is you can tell them to do a series of tasks dependent on your build, and it will sit there and it will pretty much do what you've told it to. Um, you can do things like compile SAS on them. Um, concatenate your JS. Um, if you're using HTTP2, which some people might be, um, you don't necessarily have to do that. Um, and you can also run things out of there like local servers um, and browser sync. Browser sync's really, really handy. Um, it does live reloading as you're developing. So whenever a CSS file changes, you can get it to you know, compile your SAS and fire the script that browser sync gives you to live reload those color changes, for example, on the fly. Um, just makes life a lot easier and developing a lot quicker. Um, these are all run through a package manager called NPM. Um, you can also use Yarn. Um, I haven't used Yarn before, um, but I'm hearing good things about it, so I might have to move over to that shortly. Now, something that everyone's talking about with WordPress is the REST API. Um, big fan of it. It enables you to get content out of WordPress in a JSON format for specific things. Um, at the moment, there's a lot of content endpoints. Um, you can write your own. Um, and there's also WooCommerce endpoints. There's an absolute load of WooCommerce endpoints that you can use to not only read, but push data to WordPress. Um, if you're pushing data, you want to use authentication. Um, but if you're just receiving data for, say, like a theme, um, it works really well with front-end frameworks that are in JavaScript. 
So uh, React, Vue, Angular, whatever your flavor is. Um, a React theme that was put onto WordPress.org is called Foxhound. Um, check it out if you want to know a little bit more about that. You do lose some things, though, if you choose to go down the theming route with the REST API. Uh, things like navigation, permalinks, um, and a couple of other things aren't there yet. Um, it is still in its infancy, so obviously there are things to come, um, but it is quite difficult to use at the moment. Um, Calypso, uh, if anyone's used WordPress.com, is based in React, um, and is run on a node backend, um, completely done out of the REST API. Uh, a conference that Human Made actually do is called a Day of Rest, um, and that conference is literally just about the WordPress REST API. Um, they had one this year in March. Um, I'm not sure if they're planning to have any more. Um, I went to it, and it was pretty much an invaluable resource for me. Support the community. Um, obviously, WordPress doesn't get further on without contributors. Um, and then, obviously, pretty much WordCamps that are held once a year in Australia now, um, all over the US. A lot of people sharing what they know about WordPress. Obviously, the community can't fall back as people fall, go forward. So if you come share whatever knowledge you have, um, there will always be someone that you can teach or share anything with. Um, how little, how big, it's up to you. Um, WP Australia Slack, again, I'll mention again, purely as uh, a huge resource. Um, even if you jump on there, just have a look at, say, the plugins channel. There's people everywhere just uh, looking to help each other, um, get each other by. Uh, it's not just for developers either con contributing. You can organize a work camp, organize a WP meetup, uh, even contribute to translations. Uh, obviously, WordPress is an open CMS. Um, it's used in a lot of languages. Um, and in order to translate it, you need people that A, know that language, and B, are able to translate it for you. And it does take a lot of work. Um, even just for core is a long, long time just to translate that. Um, and they're always looking for help. Main points to take away, um, I guess, in the journey that I've had from breaking things a lot. I still do it. I uh, still break stuff all the time. That's the way I learn. Um, if I don't break stuff, then, I don't know, everything kind of feels boring or is normal. Where if I break it, I kind of go, oh, crap. And I, uh, I pretty much have to figure out how to fix it. Because if I don't, um, it's going to stay broken, and that's not good for anyone. Back up anything and everything all the time, please. Uh, don't get stuck in a position where you've wiped out days and days of work that could have been solved in the space of 10 minutes of just running a backup. Um, it's not worth the hassle. It's not worth the pain not to do it. Um, ask for help. If things do go wrong and say you don't have a backup, there is always people to help. Um, obviously, in my initial use case, thankfully, our server provider was there to offer that rollback. But don't be afraid to ask for help, even if it's a tiny problem to you. Um, it's going to be something to someone else to learn from. Get involved. Um, obviously, you're here at WordCamp, so that's a massive start. Uh, always looking for organizers, volunteers. The volunteer crew here have done a massive, massive job over this weekend. Shout out to them um, and all the organizers for making this weekend happen. Um, it is hard in Australia. Um, especially because we are so, so spread out. Um, even if you contribute to your local meetup, it's going to be a big help to everyone. Um, this journey is a roller coaster. There's a lot of ups and downs. Um, downs mostly when you break something or something goes not the way you wanted to. Or even if you find out the way you've been doing things is not correct in the way, not that everyone else does it, but the way stuff should be done. Um, obviously, when you're pretty much on the ups, you're awesome. Um, the downs is going to be a bit harder, but you always learn from it. Um, and it's never just a straight line. Uh, any questions or even pretty much suggestions? Um, as I said, this is all just stuff that I've learned myself. Um, people know, may know things a bit differently um, and have better solutions than I.
that are uh, Sublime, yeah. Sorry, I didn't mention Sublime purely um, back when I was using it. It wasn't being developed for. Um, that was that weird stagnant bit between 2 and 3. Um, it's just been picked up. I haven't had a chance to go back to it. Um, I do know a couple of people that do use it, though. So that is something I could probably look at. Um, I do know it's being used a lot for JavaScript development, um, specifically React, in from what I've seen. Uh, yeah, I just purely didn't mention it because at the time when I was using it, uh, it wasn't being developed for anymore until it got picked up recently, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I'm from Victoria. I knew we could do that with the Melbourne Library. I um, wasn't sure if you had something similar up here, but it's good that you do. So, yeah. Okay, cool. <laughs> Should be more what am, I, what am I planning on breaking next. Uh, headless CMS is something I really want to push hard into. Um, but as I said, there are a lot of complications that you get uh, with trying to put WordPress themes into React. I mean, getting initial data is easy, um, but the client loses out on their back end um, from a lot of things um, purely because it, they don't translate into the, fr the API front end yet. Um, I know it is something they are working on. Um, but yeah, for me, that's probably where I'm going to go. Um, I mean, I'd like to contribute to Core in the future. Um, it's purely a time constraint for me at the moment. Um, but yeah, that's where I kind of want to be. Yeah. Yeah. I mean... That's something cool that the REST API has kind of opened up. You don't have to develop in PHP anymore um, for WordPress. You could get, you could purely use WordPress as a data source for a mobile booking app if you really had to. Um, and that's kind of what's so cool about it is you can do anything that you want. Yeah, there are a lot of plugins out there too um, that need to be translated. And if a single person's doing a plugin, it's not always easy for them just to go through and do a ton of translations. Yeah, and it's it's kind of easy too. If well, obviously, if you uh, understand the weird ins and outs. <laughs> yeah, that that's that's one of the things too. Um, I mean, yeah, as Robert said, they're always looking for people. So it is something that isn't code related. So you don't have to know the ins and outs of it. Um, it's quite literally just checking whether things match up. Coolest thing I've done, probably, <laughs> coolest thing I've done probably wasn't the right way to do it, but um, I've made, uh, it kind of didn't get put into fruition, um, but where I currently work, I'd made uh, a custom plugin that essentially got data from Gravity Forms, put it into draft custom posts in the back end for 
the client to approve whenever they wanted to. Um, and it just had so much metadata in it that I actually learned a lot about sanitization um, and pretty much data structures from it, just from purely having to deal with maybe 60 to 70 meta boxes, which as I said, it probably wasn't the right way to do it, um, but I did it in whatever experience I had at the time, so yeah. Um, poke and prod it if it breaks. Yep. Yeah. So I pretty much poke and prod it until it gives me what I want. Um, it'll break in the process for sure. Um, but that's kind of how I've always done it. If I break it, we'll roll back. Now I understand why that broke. Um, and kind of follow it from there. It is, it is hard just to deep dive, like deep dive into something like that. Uh, it's not always going to be easy. Uh, it's very time consuming. Um, but I feel like you learn a lot more out of it just doing it that way. Um, that's just from personal experience. Yeah. Yep. Um, I've used both Gulp and Grunt and Webpack. Uh, I haven't used Webpack since now. It's a little bit easy to configure. Um, before it was an absolute nightmare and it was just way too hard to use. Um, so at the moment I use Gulp. Um, I just kind of prefer it over Grunt. I feel like it's a bit easier to manage um, if you're doing a lot of stuff in it. Uh, but yeah, that's just yeah my opinion. Wonderful. Thank you. Cheers.